Hey, Sarah, are you there? I just wanted to talk about the lunch you packed for me today. Don't you think it's a little, well, awful? Wait, what? You think the lunch that I packed for you was awful? How so? What didn't you like about it? Was something rotten or just really bad tasting or something? No, not really anything like that, really. I was just thinking that you used an awful lot of frozen things, didn't you? Oh, did I really? I guess I wasn't aware that I was doing that. And you're telling me that you don't want me to put frozen foods in your lunch from now on? Well, it's not that, but this whole meal is basically entirely made up of stuff from the freezer, don't you think? I just wish that you would have put a little more thought and care into what you were serving me is all. Well, I'm really sorry you don't like your lunch, Chuck. But I just didn't really have time to make anything else. I mean, you know that I started working today, and so I just don't have time in the mornings like I used to. I get that. But if this is what you're going to be packing me from now on, I think you had better make some time. I mean, do you really need so much time in the morning to get ready for work? Is it really that big of a deal? Well, it was only my first day today, so I wanted to make sure that I had time to look nice and show up at the office a little early. I mean, I want my new co-workers and boss to think that I'm a good employee who is motivated about this job. I guess, but I mean, they've already hired you, right? So it's not like they're going to be firing you anytime soon unless you make some huge mistake. Besides, you were already doing the same job part-time before they gave you a promotion to full-time. Are you sure you're not just being a bit overdramatic with all of this? Look, I just really like my company, and I think they are really earnest about their message. I mean, the person who started the company, my current boss, used to be a working housewife as well. She wanted to start the company to help women get into the workforce and create a career path that takes into account what it means to be a woman and wife. I really respect my boss and the company. You know that. Well, look, all I'm asking is that you don't get all caught up in this new position of yours, okay? I mean, this lunch is already giving me enough reason to worry. I don't want you slacking on anything else. And just know that if having a full-time job like me ever gets too difficult for you, you can always quit and go back to being a full-time housewife again. Chuck, what has gotten into you? What is this conversation even about, huh? I mean, are you really so opposed to me having a job? I thought you said you wouldn't mind if we both worked. Of course you can work. I never said that you wouldn't be allowed to work or anything like that. I'm just saying that before your job, you should be caring about your family and making sure they're taken care of first, right? Besides, you're getting old and I'm wondering how you're going to be concentrating on the family and your job. I mean, just how long are you going to make this job the center of your life? Chuck, I can assure you now that my job is not going to take over my life. In fact, my job is very encouraging of mothers and expecting mothers, if you must know. Besides, this way we can save up more for when we retire. You care about that, don't you? What if Jake wants to go to college out of state or something? You know how expensive that's going to be. Right. Well, I guess we do need to put aside some money for the children, but I think that you really ought to be worrying about my lunch before anything. Chuck, I am not a personal chef or anything like that, okay? I do worry about making sure that your needs are being taken care of. But the fact of the matter is that I just have less time now. It's not a measure of how much I care, okay? Well, either way, it doesn't change the fact that you're still trading my quality of life for your ability to work. I'm sorry, but I think that you should be just a little more grateful about the fact that I have been making your lunch every day now. If you really don't like what you're eating for lunch now, however, then I guess I can just give you a bit of money to buy your own lunch. So you're really just going to stop making lunches for me entirely then? Wow. I just really can't believe that that's how bad things have gotten for us. I'm sorry, but I really don't think that you have much room to complain. I've explained to you the situation and offered an alternative. Besides, our son has no problem at all with what I pack him. He has never told me that my lunches are nasty. You're the only one who ever complains about the things that I do and how I do them. Oh, please. Are you really going to try and compare me to a child? He'd eat anything you put in front of him. How can you be serious about that? Well, it works fine for me. I mean, if you really have something to complain about, then why don't you try cooking your own lunch? Why are you acting like this is such a big deal? I'm not complaining. I'm just voicing my opinion, that's all. Of course I'm thankful that you make lunches for me. 
I was just saying that I thought there were quite a few frozen foods in here. Oh, really? Because I don't think I've heard you say once that you're thankful for what I do. And you never ever complimented my lunches either, even before I started this job. Right, well, what did you have in mind for us for dinner tonight? I was going to bake some chicken and serve it with rice and some vegetables. Does that suit your need? Well, if I'm being honest with you, it sounds like another lazy meal, really. Are you kidding me? What about that is lazy? How is that not enough for you? It's a protein, a grain, and vegetables. That's a whole meal. Right, but I mean, you're just going to put the rice, vegetables, and chicken next to each other on a plate and just serve it to me like that, right? Besides, you said that you were going to bake the chicken? So basically, you're not even really cooking anything. You're just making the oven do all the work. What on earth are you talking about? How do you think cooking is done? Am I not cooking for use fire that comes from the gas stove? I think that you're just purposely not trying to see my point. All I'm saying is that I wish you would put a little more care into the food that you make for me. And I am telling you that we are both working now and I'm asking you for some patience and understanding. Did you really think that nothing was going to change at all now that we're both working? I mean, this is my first day at work and you're already complaining so much. You know that I'm going to come home tired and full of new information today, right? Okay, geez, I'm sorry. I wouldn't have said anything if I knew you were going to make such a big deal about all of this. I guess I just thought that you could handle the responsibility without sacrificing everything that I had gotten used to before you were working. Are you kidding me right now, Chuck? We literally talked about this before I started this job. I told you that I wouldn't be able to do all of the chores around the house like I used to. You told me that you would be there to help me out if I needed it. We agreed that we would split most of the work. I thought that you were ready for this. I know, but I just... Well, I thought that I wouldn't have to do anything. That's why I agreed to it. Besides, you get home before I even do. I don't see why you can't just get things done before I get home. I really hope that you're not serious about that, Chuck. Are you really going to try and tell me that you didn't mean any of what you said? I don't mind doing something like cooking before you come home to make sure that we all have dinner. But I'm not going to be able to clean the house and do the laundry beforehand. I need your help for that. But that isn't fair. I don't get why I should have to do that work just because you couldn't get it done on time. That is not what I am even talking about. Ugh, it can be so infuriating even trying to discuss this with you. But anyways, my lunch break is almost over and I have some training documents that I need to look over before the break ends. I have to get back to work now. We'll talk about this later. You can't just walk away from this conversation. We still have to figure out who's going to do the laundry. I'm telling you now, that if you won't be able to handle a joke like this, just ask for part-time. Hey Chuck, are you there? We need to talk, like, right now. I thought I asked you to hang up the laundry. So why isn't it up yet, and why have you already left the house? Wait, what? What do you mean? Did you really tell me to do that? I'm not so sure about that. Well, I am. I asked you to do it. I know that I did. Are you really sure about that? I don't remember you asking me anything like that whatsoever, really. But anyways, I've already left the house, so I don't really see the point of this conversation when you could just be doing it. You didn't do anything around the house at all that I asked you to do. What is the matter with you, Chuck? Well, I don't know what you want me to do about it. It isn't my fault. I mean, even if you did ask me, I just forgot, okay? I mean, are you really going to blame me for that? Besides, today's our day off and you're back home already now, right? So I just don't get why you just can't do it. Oh, I am going to do it because we need to have dry laundry to put on. But you get that this is bigger than the laundry, right? I thought I told you that I needed more help with chores around the house. You told me that you were going to do it. I was counting on you doing it. But you're home right now. Why can't you just do it? But come on, you know you're better at that stuff than me. How can you say that when Jake is a literal child and he still does a much better job helping me than you do? I mean, he even went out to do some of the grocery shopping for me and even helped me cook dinner, too. Well, he's just a student. He's got nothing but time on his hands anyways. In fact, you know what? If Jake is so much better than me, you can just count on him for everything. 
After all, when he's in college, he'll be living on his own. So it'd be good for him to learn these things. That's honestly not a bad idea, given how much more useful Jack is around the house than you are. Did you know that I don't even have to pack lunches for him anymore? And just what are you trying to get at with that little comment, huh? Well, do you remember the day that you went out golfing? Jack stayed home all day and helped me clean the house then. And just what do you think we're going to do when I'm too old to take care of the house by myself, huh? Well, we'll just get Jack's wife to do all the cooking and cleaning for us then, of course. Do you even think before you send these messages, Chuck? Why are you always trying to get someone else to do your work for you? I mean, I work and do my best to take care of the house and you still won't try to help out at all. Here we go again. I knew that you should have just stuck with that part-time job in the first place. Well, I'm happy that I'm working full-time, thank you very much. And just why don't you want me working anyways? Already told you. Now you're concentrating way too much on your job and letting this house fall apart. Do you really think that our house is anywhere near falling apart, Chuck? Because if you do, then the only person you can blame is the one not hauling their own weight around here. You! But, I mean, you two are so much better than it than me. And be that as it may, I have explained to you now that I'm working, I just don't have time to do all that work now. So, if you want something done around the house, then you can do it. No, I won't do them. You were going to do them for me. Now you have some free time, so you can do all the chores. Besides, if I do them, you were just going to have to do them again anyways. Are you really so against just doing a little bit of work around the house to help out your wife and son? I don't even know how to use the vacuum cleaner. You expect me to be doing things like the laundry? Are you kidding me with that? I really don't believe that you don't even know how to use the vacuum. But I've offered to show you how to do everything that you'll need to know. Even if you have time to teach me all of that, then you might as well just do all of the work yourself. It would just be faster that way, don't you think? I really don't even know what to say to you anymore. But I've just about had enough out of you and I'm going to get back to cleaning the house. Well, that's what you should have been doing this whole time anyways. And since you have so much time on your hands anyway, why don't you make something good for dinner too? And by that I mean, put some actual effort into it, okay? If you don't, I'll make you cook it all over again. If you want to keep your full-time job, you'll do as I say and keep the house clean, got it? And if you can't do that, then I will force you to go back to working part-time. Hey, Sarah, where are you? Have you still not gotten home from work yet? I can't find Jack anywhere either. Where are the two of you? What's going on here? Jack is at the library studying right now, Chuck. And I told you this morning that I was going to have an appointment at the beauty salon. So that's where I am now. I shouldn't be much longer before I'm on my way home. Wait, what? Why are you wasting money going to some beauty salon? What is the matter with you? What is the matter with me? What are you talking about? Why are you reacting like this? What's wrong with me going there? I'm getting my roots touched up and getting a little haircut. Is that really so bad? But why can't you do all that at home? Why do you have to waste our money paying someone else to do that for you? Because I work full time and meet with clients for a living. I want to make sure that I look presentable for all of that. If you really are trying to tell me that I'm not even allowed to maintain my own appearance, then I don't even know what to say. I just would like to know why you think that you have to look good for anyone who isn't your husband. I mean, just where are you going around with that new haircut, huh? Also, the house is looking horrible. Did you two do any cleaning at all today? I'm going to be going out drinking, and the house better be clean by the time I get back tonight. Do I make myself clear? Did you really just send that message? Just who in the world do you think you are, huh? What do you mean, who do you think I am? I think that I'm your husband, and what I say goes, got it? Now you're going to get back here and clean up the house like I'm ordering you to. And after that, you and I are going to talk about having you quit your job and getting my mom involved and training you how to be a good wife. I know that if my mom could see the way that you take care of our house, that she would be appalled at you. Hmm. Are you sure about that? Because the one who helped clean the house today was your mom, actually. And here I thought that she did a really good job, actually. I guess I should call her and let her know that you weren't happy at all with how she did it, though. 
I'll tell her you want her to come back and do it all again. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean it was my mom who was doing all the cleaning? You mean she came over and helped sort the house out? That's right. I talked to her and told her about how you were never happy with the way that I cleaned the house. So she offered to come over and clean. She came around the afternoon. But surely you're not telling me that you're not happy with the job your mom did, right? Well, I just... Actually, you know what? Now that you mention it, things do look pretty clean. I guess maybe it was just bad lighting. It is late and all. Maybe maybe my eyes were tired or something. I don't know. No, no. You clearly hate the job she did. So I'll tell her to come back and do it all over again. Please don't do that. I just... I'm sorry, okay? I shouldn't have said that. No, you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have treated me all the way that you have been the last few weeks because I am sick of it. You said that you would have no problem with me working and now all you do is try and control my life and I am sick of it! I'm going to come home after my hair is done, pack up my bags, and leave you. Sarah, please. It's been a whole week. When are you going to come back? Why would I ever do that, huh? Well, my mom told me all about what I was doing wrong. My mom told me all about how hard it is to keep a house clean, especially when you have to worry about working. So you're telling me that she told you what I had been going through? That's right. I had no idea about just how difficult all of it was. I swear. Had I known, I never would have acted that way. Well, you certainly weren't making it any easier with how insulting you were being towards me, you know? I know, but you aren't really going to divorce me, are you? I mean, we're both way too old for that. And we still have our son to worry about. Oh, please. You would have it so that I was never working and always having to be reliant on you for money. Except for the fact that you and I both know that you don't even make enough money to take care of all of us. But I just, I'll do something about the money, okay? I can find a second job. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that your mom talked about how difficult it is to keep a house running? And all you can think of is that you'll earn more money so that you can force me back into the home? Why can't you just help me clean the house? Because I hate doing chores. I hate doing them so, so much. So please, won't you quit your job, move back in, and, and just clean the house like you always used to do? I can't believe that you're really asking me to do this. <laughs> this is honestly just pathetic, Chuck. Are you really so scared of cooking for yourself? But I hate cooking most of all. I really have no idea how to do it, and everything I make tastes awful. Please, Sarah, I need you. Can't you see that? Oh, I know very well that you need me, but the fact is that I also know that I don't need you. Goodbye, Chuck. I hope that at the very least, this teaches you to take care of yourself. After that, I sent movers to collect the rest of my things from the house and I served Chuck with divorce papers. He was forced to move into a much smaller apartment that he could afford, and quickly had to learn how to fend for himself. The last time I heard any news about him, it was because he had set his apartment on fire trying to cook something. He had forgotten to put the water in his instant noodles and they caught fire in the microwave. As for Jack and I, I am still working full time and providing for both of us. Jack understands that without his dad around and me working more that he needs to do more around the house for the both of us. Jack still keeps in touch with his father, however, and has even been spending some of his free time going over to his house and trying to teach him to cook and clean. I don't know where that boy got his patience from, but his father is all the luckier for it. Oh, dearie me, Chloe. Whatever are we going to do with you? I see you missed another one of our mother's meetings. I thought I made it clear you were definitely to show up this time. Why do you seem totally incapable of listening to a word I say? I'm sorry, Karen, but like I mentioned before, I'm not going to have many chances to attend your mom's meetings from now on. Excuse me? Don't get me wrong. I'm really grateful for the invite, but I just started working full-time at a new company. I'm pretty sure I told you all this before, right? Your mom's meetings and tea parties are always held during the week, so there's just no way I'm going to be able to make them. I get that you want me to come, and I'm really appreciative of that. But at the end of the day, I have bills to pay. And if I skipped work to spend time with you guys, well, put it this way. I wouldn't have a job for very long. You do get where I'm coming from, right? It's not because I don't want to see you guys. Get a load of this nonsense. Wait, 
You think you're special because you have a full-time job? Oh, I get it. You think you're better than me and the other moms, don't you? No. No, 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 no. Like, seriously, it's not like that at all. Fine, I see how it is. So you're the type of woman who looks down her nose at stay-at-home housewives and temporary agency or part-time workers like me and the girls, are you? Whoa. What the hell? How do you work that one out? No, it's not like that at all. You've got this all wrong. You know what? If that's what you think of me, then I'd rather we just terminated this relationship right here. That goes for the rest of the moms. What did you just say? How dare you? You have no right to do that. Our kids are all going to end up at different schools due to us all living in different school districts when they move up to elementary school. So we probably stop hanging out then anyway. What kind of twisted backflip logic is that? To think I so kindly went out of my way to invite you. And this is how you repay me? With nothing but a bad attitude and disrespect? This is a slap in the face. Who the hell do you think you are? In any case, I have a long business trip coming up. So it'd be literally impossible for me to make it to your get-togethers even if I wanted to. Would you mind leaving me alone from now on? <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Goodbye. Hello, Chloe. I heard your dad runs a high-end burger restaurant in the posh part of town. Well, I have a suggestion. Let's hold our next mother's meeting at your daddy's restaurant. How does that sound? With this, you can make up for not showing up to our past meetings in one fell swoop. Even if you are nothing but pathetic corporate livestock who spends her days slaving away in a cubicle while thinking she's better than everyone else. Me and the other moms can't turn down an offer of free burgers at one of the most luxurious burger joints in all of New York. A stroke of genius, if I do say so myself. Ah, as for the reservation at the restaurant, don't worry. I already booked us in. I knew that if I left it to you, you'd probably try to pull some pathetic stunt to get out of it. Oh, and by the way, it's tonight! I took the liberty of renting out the entire restaurant. So prepare for the luxury burger party of a lifetime. The reservation's at 6 p.m., so you better damn well show up this time. I invited a lot of people, so my reputation's on the line here. That's right. You're going to be there at 6 p.m. pronto, ready to entertain me and the other moms as the daughter of the restaurant owner. Naturally, you'll be paying for everything. <laughs> Hello, Chloe. It's already way past 6 p.m., but you're nowhere to be seen. You can't seriously be telling me you're not coming to this one either. God damn it, Chloe! I went out of my way to make sure this party was held at a time you could definitely make. You can't use work as an excuse to get out of it this time. Not only that, but I even booked the party at your dad's restaurant so you'd have no trouble finding the place. And you still have the nerve not to show up? Chloe, you've taken this friendship group for granted one too many times. I am livid. You won't get away with this. Is this what you wanted? Even if me and you did stop seeing each other due to living in different school districts, that doesn't mean you'd never see any of the kids from our mother's group again. Some of the girls' kids would still be in your children's classes. You do understand what I'm saying here, don't you? If you do, I suggest you get your ass to this restaurant pronto. <laughs> but even if you don't, me and the girls fully intend to order every single burger on the menu. And all in your dime. You do know how much I love getting my lips around a thick, succulent piece of meat, right? <laughs> That's a joke there. Alright, let the burger party commence. Chloe, where are you? Why are you still not here? Me and the other moms rented out your dad's high-end burger restaurant all to ourselves. And the 50 of us are currently in the midst of a party of a lifetime. We ordered so many burgers. I think your dad's meat reserves might run out soon. <laughs> I don't know why the hell you're taking so long. But you need to hurry up and get here before there's nothing left. I mean, really, how rude. To think the host would stand up her guest like this. Your hospitality could seriously use some work. 
Uh, 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 another round of burgers just arrived. Now that gets my juices flowing. <laughs> Chloe? You didn't end up coming at all in the end. I'm so disappointed in you. What's worse, you didn't even reply to a single one of my messages. Tell me, dear, who exactly do you think you are? And what do you think gives you the right to behave so despicably? Oh well, what do I care? This is your dad's restaurant. And, just as we agreed at the start, I'm going to tell them you'll be the one footing the bill. Alright, I think I'll treat myself to the single most expensive burger on the menu, followed by three luxurious desserts to finish up. Uh-huh. What is this? Uh, Chloe? There you are. I was just about to message you. Won't you be a darling and talk some sense into the blockhead staff at your dad's restaurant? What are you talking about? You know, silly. You're going to pay for mine and the girls' magnificent burger party today, just like we agreed. The bill came out to $6,800, but I told the staff it was your treat. Be a dear, and pass on the message to your dad so he can let them know, okay? $6,800? Well, there were 50 of us, not to mention all the hungry, crying children. It might sound like a lot, but it can't be helped given the circumstances. <laughs> 50 people? Yep, I pulled out all the stops for this one. I invited my old friends from high school and told them they could bring their families. Then, there's all 12 of my ex-boyfriends, their parents, and of course, the usual girls from our mother's meetings and their children. I somehow feel like this is more than just a regular old mom's meeting. Forget that. Why didn't you tell your dad about this beforehand, even though we discussed it all in advance? All this trouble could have been avoided if you had just done your job. It's one thing not to show up at the party, but another to completely ignore all of your responsibilities. Do you realize how awkward you've made things for me? The staff are getting all worked up about the bill now because of your negligence. I told them several times that the owner's daughter would be covering the bill, but they're insisting the owner only has a son. Um, can you hold on a minute, please? I need to read through all the messages you sent. Huh? What the? You mean you haven't been reading them at all? You sent them all while I was on a long international flight. So there was no Wi-Fi, and my phone was turned off the whole time. When I turned it back on just now, it blew up with notifications. Wait, what? You were on a plane? Karen, I just got done reading through your messages. Fantastic. Do you understand now? In that case, you need to hurry up and explain the situation to Daddy Restaurant Owner as soon as possible. That high-end burger joint? Is it the one that's a few minutes walk away from the southern exit of Flopadoop Station? Yes! Are you kidding me? It's your own father's restaurant, you silly girl. Surely you don't need me to confirm the address. Whatever. Just hurry up and let them know what's going on so we can leave and put this ridiculous situation behind us. The owner of that burger joint isn't my dad. He's my ex-father-in-law. Huh? Your ex-father-in-law? Yes. The owner of that restaurant is my ex-husband's dad. Huh? Wait. I don't even... Your ex-husband's dad? Yep, we divorced half a year ago. Didn't I tell you? Um... Part of the reason I stopped being able to come to the get-togethers as much was because I couldn't afford to get by as a stay-at-home housewife anymore. Which is why I ended up finding full-time work. I'm pretty sure I did already tell you this. Wait, what? Are you serious? You told me that? Whatever, none of this matters. Father, father-in-law, ex-father-in-law, it's all the same in the end. You just need to give him a call, tell him you'll cover the bill, and make this all go away. You'll do that, won't you, darling? What? Pay the bill yourself. But you promised to cover everything for us. You should already know this, but at no point in the chat logs that I just went over did I make anything resembling a promise to cover the bill. Not even close. Well... This is all your fault for not checking your phone. If you had just read my messages, none of this would be happening. It's impossible to receive messages from 30,000 feet in the air, Karen. What do you think I am, a magician? 
Um... Besides, even when I landed, I was so busy with the preparations for my business trip that I only used my work phone. Which means I only just got around to turning my own phone back on. No matter how you look at it, there's no way any conversation that transpired between us could be interpreted as me consenting to pay a $6,800 bill at my ex-father-in-law's restaurant. No, 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 wait a second. There has to be some kind of arrangement we can come to here. Chloe, are you in a different country now? Yep. I'm in Canberra, Australia. Why? Liar! In any case, the reason I divorced my husband is because my in-laws were bullying me. You're dreaming if you seriously think I'd reach out to my scumbag ex-father-in-law over something this absurd. Then who's going to cover this $6,800 bill? I don't know. Pay it yourself? There's no way I can afford to do that. Well, how about you split it between everyone who showed up then? By my calculations, if there were 50 of you, assuming there were 10 children, that should come to about $170 per person. I doubt they'll be happy about it, but it sure as hell beats paying for everything yourself. I can't slap my friends in the face like that. I promised them all the whole thing would be free. Besides, everyone went home already. Oh, I see. Oh well, not my problem. What? Now, if you excuse me, I want to get a good night's sleep before tomorrow's business meeting. I won't be replying to your messages anymore. No, wait! We're not done here! What am I supposed to do now? Seriously, I'm screwed if you don't help me! God damn you, Chloe! Do you have any idea how much crap I had to go through over these last few days because of you? My friends who came to the party burst out laughing at me when I told them what happened. And now, none of them are speaking to me. And it's all because of you. I mean, it's not like there's any lasting damage. Because my husband paid the bill after a few carefully chosen words and a flutter of eyelashes. But still, you caused me a major pain in the ass. Mark my words, woman. I will be sending you a charge for that $6,800. So you better prepare yourself. You either pay or they'll be held to pay. Do I make myself clear? Hey, Karen. I don't think this is the time to be making empty threats. Empty threats? Oh, believe me, you tragically decluded moron. You will be paying me. <laughs> My dad says your husband's fired. Huh? Your dad? What are you talking about? Do you mean your real dad this time? Yeah. Why would your real dad be involved now? <laughs> your husband works for Viral Cheesecakes, right? Wait, what? How do you know that? Because I work there too. And because my dad's the CEO. The CEO? Now, bearing that in mind, I have a question for you. Do you know how your husband managed to get a hold of the $6,800 he paid for the bill at the burger restaurant a few days ago? He told me he took it out of his savings from back when he was single. I see. So he didn't tell you the rest then? The rest? What's that supposed to mean? I guess I have no choice but to tell you myself. Don't worry. I have my dad's permission to discuss everything I'm about to tell you. What do you think your husband planned on doing after paying the bill? What do you mean? He tried to claim that $6,800 on company expenses. What? I'm sure even you understand that a party at a burger restaurant isn't an appropriate use of company expenses. When one of the employees in the accounting department realized what your husband was trying to do, and reported him to HR. It occurred to them this might not be the first time he's misappropriated company expenses. Upon being summoned to a disciplinary meeting to explain himself, he confessed to everything. Your husband has been falsely claiming on company expenses for the last two years for things that don't even exist. What? Apparently, he tried to pull the wool over their eyes by mixing in the receipt from the burger joint in with a bunch of receipts from the business trip he went on last week. But with the amount of money being so outrageously high, obviously someone picked up on it. There's no way that your husband could have ended up with that receipt by accident. So the only reasonable explanation here is that the two of you were willfully attempting to defraud the company. Is that why you just said he's fired? The official investigation is still underway, which means the official announcement still hasn't been made. But this is textbook misappropriation of funds. 
It's written as clear as day in the terms of employment on the contract he signed. When he started working for us, that doing so would make him liable for instant dismissal. So it's safe to say he's pretty much guaranteed to get fired when the investigation's over. Oh, oh my god! Is this really happening? This is bad! This is bad! This is bad! This is bad! Oh, what are they supposed to do now? Ugh. And why are you asking me? Because this was all your fault to begin with! <laughs> Don't blame me, Karen. You're the only one responsible for this. What? I told you why I couldn't make it to the mom's meetings anymore. But you couldn't just take what I said at face value, could you? Your ego was so bruised, you went out of your way to try and get your own back on me by renting the most expensive burger joint in town to throw a party for your friends and forcing me to pay for it. I didn't make a single reply to your deranged slew of messages, but still, in spite of that, you somehow managed to convince yourself I'd promised to pay. Then, as an unforeseen circumstance of your shenanigans, your husband was found to be stealing from my dad's company. So go on, Karen, tell me. Which part of the story includes me doing anything wrong? Because! Because you stopped coming to our friendly get-together! How many times do I have to tell you? I already told you why I couldn't make it anymore. Well, it was still your fault. We're just going around in circles now. I'm done with this conversation. No, wait! Chloe! Please, you have to help me! I'm screwed! Not my problem. I'm pretty busy myself, you know. Your husband revealed some glaring flaws in our security procedures. So me and the rest of the executives at Viral Cheesecakes have to strengthen our systems to make sure nothing like this ever happens again. So what? What's your point? My point is that I don't have any time to waste on the likes of you. What? Goodbye, Karen. After that, when we finished assembling the evidence dossier providing beyond doubt Karen's husband's misappropriation of funds, we sent him a bill for the entire sum he'd stolen. Luckily for him, he dodged prison when his parents jumped in to save his ass by covering the initial payment, before forcing him to work 14-hour port-per-day shifts at a friend's company in order to pay them back. Before long, he divorced Karen and cut all ties with her. As for their kids, they were temporarily taken in by some relatives, but I heard they'll both be getting put up for adoption soon. And that's the story of how Karen ended up all on her own. Rumor has it that her parents pulled a vanishing act in the middle of the night, 10 years ago, to escape the hell that was living in the same house as their argumentative bitch queen of a daughter. Which means that, in the absence of a family home to go to, Karen's still living in the same city. Somehow or other, despite having hardly any money to her name, she managed to find herself a rundown apartment in a part of town with all the hookers and crack dens. Hilariously, even her neighbors there don't trust her, and her existence as a social pariah continues. At least she has the cockroaches investing her new apartment to keep her company. Occasionally, an old friend who lives nearby sends me reports of an emaciated, worn-out-looking Karen, aimlessly wandering around town with a bottle of whiskey while sobbing uncontrollably.